Yeah, man! Hello, my name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna make for you rice and beans. Rice and beans. We're gonna need some rice, I'm using parboiled, kidney beans. Salt, sea salt, coconut milk. I'm using frozen coconut milk. You can use a 50 gram pack of coconut powder, a stalk of scallion, spring of thyme, two garlic cloves, coconut oil instead of butter, one. Scotch bonnet pepper, tablespoon of distilled white vinegar, piece ginger. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. Measure one cup dried kidney beans in a bowl. Add enough water in the bowl. Drizzle several drops of distilled white vinegar in the bowl of water. Wash dried kidney beans clean. Before you start washing, check the beans and remove rotten beans and any foreign objects. After that, remove that water, give kidney beans a final rinse. It's best if you do this part under fresh running water. Add enough water, allow kidney beans to soak for an hour or two. Peel garlic clove. Cut off ends. Trim spoilage. Hot piece ginger. It's about half inch piece. Just peel it but still leave the skin on it. Scallion. Remove dying leaves, cut off ends. The root end and the tip of the leaf that's dying. Spring time. After that, wash vegetables, seasonings clean. Add them in a bowl of water, juice several drops of distilled white vinegar, wash vegetable seasonings clean. ginger. Just wash the ginger properly. Be sure there's no dirt on it. You can leave the skin on the ginger. Just wash it properly. Just wash it clean. Once you do that, give vegetables a final rinse. It's best if you do this part on a fresh running water. Grind garlic to puree. Keep ingredients separate. That's the ginger, spring of thyme, and there's a scallion. And one scotch bonnet pepper. This is our seasonings we're going to use. Cover it, put it aside for later. Oh yes, add a quarter teaspoon of dried pimento berries. 
So this is all the ingredients we're going to use in the rice and beans. We're going to add the salt separate. This is our beans. It's been soaking for an hour. Between two, remove the water that it's been soaking in. We're going to pressure cook our kidney beans now. Put to heat a pressure cooker. Put the stove gauge on four, medium low. Add, that's two cups of water. We're using three and a half cups of water today. Add your soaked kidney beans in the pressure cooker in the water. That's the half cup of water. So in all we're using three and a half cups of water with one cup of soaked kidney beans. Be sure the pressure cooker lid rubber is on properly. Put pressure cooker lid on properly. Turn the nozzle or the gauge to the proper setting where it says where it has all the food on it. Allow. The stove's gauge is on four, medium low. Once it starts to whistle, put your timer for 18 minutes. This is my coconut milk that I squeezed a coconut couple days back and stored it in the freezer. It's still frozen so what I'm doing now is just adding it in some water and just allow it to defrost fast. You can use a 50 gram pack of coconut powder. Just dissolve it in two cups of water. Time is coming to an end. Once it does, turn the stove off. Just allow the pressure cooker to cool. Try to move it from the heat and put it on a cooler spot on the stove and allow it to cool. If you're in a hurry, go where the faucet is, then put the pressure cooker in water, just the bottom in it in the sink. Just fill up the sink with water and just let the pressure cooker stay in the water and get cool. That's only if you're in hurry. If not, allow it to cool on a large saucepan. So once it cools and the pressure gauge is down, show that it's safe to open the pressure cooker's lid. Remove cooked kidney beans and put it in a big enough saucepan. Add your cooked kidney beans into a big enough saucepan. You can cook it in the same pressure cooker but I like to use a different saucepan. Check your kidney beans to see if it's cooked. Take one, squeeze it. If it's squeezed easily, it's tenderized just right. Turn stove's gauge on two, just below low. Add your seasonings, scallion, mashed garlic, dried pimento berries, a piece of ginger, spring of thyme. Measure and add a tablespoon of salt. 
I use sea salt. Use, I'm using one tablespoon, a little bit less than one tablespoon. After that, measure and add one and a half tablespoon coconut oil. You can use butter instead. In fact, most people use butter. But if you know anything about me, I don't use butter. I use coconut oil instead of butter. This is the frozen coconut milk. It's the frost. Measure and add two cups coconut milk. If you're using a coconut powder instead, mix it out well in two cups of water. Then add it to your cooked kidney beans. Alright, once you do that, stir it in. Use the pan's lid, cover pan properly. Stove gauge is on two, low. The objective here now is to allow the beans with the coconut milk and the seasonings to cook on low for a while, say about 30 minutes or so. After five minutes with the stove gauge on two, low, this is what it looks like. Measure and add one tablespoon distilled white vinegar. Add the vinegar the same time when we added all the seasonings. Put the lid back on properly and allow. This is our rice. I'm using parboiled rice today. You can use white rice instead. Before you wash rice, Search rice for spoilage and any foreign object. Look for any foreign object and remove it. So go through patiently, search through your grains of rice a foreign object and remove it. Once you do that, add enough water in the bowl of rice, drizzle several drops of distilled white vinegar, wash rice properly. I use two cups and a half of rice. So dirty the water is. That's why it's very important to wash the rice before cooking. So spend some time, wash the rice properly. What I like to do is use my fingers and my hands and just wash the rice properly. Once you do that, remove that water. And it's best if you do this part on the fresh one running water. When removing the water, pour the water in the middle of your palm and hold your fingers together but slightly apart, allowing the water to run through your fingers easily. Rinse rice three between four times. And it's best if you do this part on the fresh running water. and wash rice about five minutes before adding. And when you do that final rinse, make sure you drain water. Make sure you drain excess water. 
if you're not comfortable using your fingers you can always use a strainer make sure you do this part about two minutes between five minutes before cooking before adding the rice the objective is not to wash the rice ahead of time and put it down wash it just before you're gonna use it so it's been cooking on low 20 between 30 minutes now and this is what it looks like this is what you want you want the, the rice and peas the rice and beans liquid to be well seasoned before you add the rice you want it to be seasoned and flavored properly before you add the rice once you do that add your washed rice to the cooked kidney beans Turn the stove's gauge on 4, medium low, stir in, stir in, this is a tip that we used to do whenever we use a fork and you put a cross alongside the rice and peas and just let the fork stand up in the middle. That's a sign we usually use to say that's enough water in it and it's ready for cooking but I'm not cooking plenty of rice today so the rice, the, the fork is not going to just stand up. But normally if, if I was cooking plenty and I do that little trick, the fork will just stand up right in the middle of the pot. Alright, put the lid on properly, allow. After five minutes, since we added the rice, this is what it looks like. You can stir it in properly, rotate the bottom to the top, and just stir your rice in properly and mix in the rice with the rice and peas liquid. All right, what I like to do is take the seasonings that's in the rice and peas and put them one side, gather them one side. Don't just stir your pot with all the seasoning because the scallion is going to break up in the rice and peas and you don't want that. So once you do that, put the lid on properly, stove gauges on four, medium low, allow. After 10 minutes, this is what it looks like. The stove's gauge is on 4, medium low. That's what you want. Now would be a good time to turn the stove's gauge on low, almost off low. Some people call it simmering. Watch the pepper. Keep the pepper open. Stir your pot in properly. What I like to do is shift all the seasonings to one side because you don't want to break up the seasonings, especially the scallion in the rice and peas and stir in the rice properly and mix the rice with the rice and peas liquid thoroughly. Use the pan's lid, cover the pan properly, allow. This is how low you want it. You want the flame to be low at this point. Almost off low. Almost off low. That's how low you want it watch the stove every now and again to see if the flame is still there if it's not hot 15 minutes now since it's been on low almost off low and so this is what your rice and peas look like remember now keep all the seasoning gather the seasonings use your fork and gather all the seasoning in a little corner and then stir in your rice properly Just stir it in properly Watch the pepper. Do not allow the pepper to break up in the rice and peas. Keep the pepper whole. To so do what I'm doing, gather the seasonings in a corner by themselves. You don't want the scallion to break up in the rice and peas. Stir in the rice with the beans thoroughly. Note, the rice and peas will not burn if the stove's gauge is on very low. Once you do that, put the pan's lid back on, stove's gauge is on low still. This is my deep fried chicken. Watch the gauge, make sure it's not going off. 30 minutes now on very low. This is what it looks like, it's coming to. Now would be a good time to remove the scallion, the seasonings, the scallion, the thyme stick, and the pepper. Try not to burst the pepper at all. Once you do that, give your rice and peas a proper stir. Just flip the bottom to the top 
and stirring in the rice and peas properly. Either stir it in or mix it in properly. Cover it properly and allow. This is, a, this is my deep fried chicken. I'm having it with today. If you want to see me do deep fried chicken, search for it. It's been 45 between 50 minutes now. Steaming on low, very low. And this is what it looks like. We, we're just about finishing. We almost finished. If not, it's probably finished. Let's look through. A piece of ginger help preserve the rice and peas. It distorts spoilage. Alright, stir your rice and peas in. To be sure it's cooking properly. Just take a scoop. Taste it. It's okay. That's it. Finish. Put the lid back on until serving. Turn the stove off. This is rice and beans. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. Subscribe, like, share. You should try cooking this meal yourself. Give us feedback when you do. This is rice and beans. Some people call it rice and peas. rice and beans dinner time so before serving stir your pot in I like to do the stir your pot up stir it in Just fold the top to the bottom take a scoop of this delicious rice and beans lay it on a plate This is a typical Sunday dinner accompaniment in Jamaica. Typically, people eat rice and beans with fried chicken, stew beef, stew pork, escovish, this is my fried chicken, Sunday dinner, rice and beans. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. I have several cookbooks available. Look for those two as well. Feeding time. Well, the rice and peas or rice and beans is delicious. You can eat the rice and beans alone. To me, it's flavorful without using butter. It's just as flavorful without using butter. It has a typical rice and beans flavor. I did 
separately Sunday dinner side salad so look for that video as well not gonna see me eat all this meal today this food is a blessing rice and peas is a blessing guys bye until next time walk good I'm gonna have a seat and finish eating my Sunday dinner rice and beans yeah man